Ashley, and I'm going to show you how to properly care for your wounds today. Everyone has had minor cuts or scrapes or even major incidents, but what most people don't know is how to properly care for those wounds. Slapping Neosporin and a Band-Aid on the affected area just doesn't cut it anymore. Even the smallest wounds, such as a paper cut, need proper treatment to prevent infection and scarring. Um, I'm going to show you how to care for simple wounds and our patient who has a large wound today in simple and a safe way. To do this, you need to know what you need. You need a pair of latex gloves, some gauze tape, a few cotton balls, a cleansing solution, which can either be um, rubbing alcohol, what we have here is sodium chloride, aka saline, antibiotic ointment, a pair of scissors, and some gauze sponge. Today we have a patient who has cut their leg and is obviously pretty dirty and um, tender, bleeding and oozing, which is normal for any fresh wound. First of all, what you need to do is put on your latex gloves to protect yourself. So even though the patient's the one with the cut, you need to be safe not to spread any germs or you might have a cut that you're unaware of that you don't want to get infected. So first of all, you need to put on your latex gloves, look at the area, kind of decide where you want to start cleaning, make sure that it's in a good position where you can hold um, the patient down and just kind of look at it. Secondly, you need to clean any excess debris, which we can kind of see that the patient has some dirt, some other stuff that doesn't need to be there in her wound. So we need to clean it off. You can do this with um, like an alcohol prep wipe, but today I'm just going to use some cotton balls and some saline. And you can either take this saline and spray it directly on the wound or just soak it in the cotton ball. And I'm just going to soak the cotton ball because you want to just gently dab the area to not get any of the cotton stuck in any of the scabbing that's already been created. And just gently dab. clean open wound okay once it's cleaned off you want to open your gauze Make sure you measure it. I mean, we might already have good measurement. It needs to be half an inch extending the wound on all sides, just so when you secure it in place, you um, it's attached to uninjured skin. Because you don't want it to be attached to the open wound. That It'll be really painful if you need to adjust it. So I'm just going to cut off a piece of gauze. And I mean, if it's a little more, which obviously it is a lot more than half an inch, you can, this would be fine, but I'm just going to trim it down because when it gets bulky, it gets in the way more than helping anything. So just kind of um, hold it above the, the area and make sure that your measurements are correct. So once you have your gauze cut out, you um, the next thing you want to do is to put on the antibiotic ointment. And what you don't want to do is take the tube and directly squeeze them out, which I know we all do at some point. But really, um, doing that, you risk touching the wound and contaminating the whole bottle of ointment. 
So what you want to do is actually squeeze the ointment onto the bandage or gauze, whatever you're going to apply to the wound, just so you don't risk contaminating the whole bottle. So I'm just going to squeeze this on here just enough to where I know it's going to soak into the wound and lay directly on top of it. Um, so once you have it on the gauze like this, you want to lay it directly over the wound and, you know, extend it. We obviously see that right here there's room. On the bottom there's room. On all four sides, it's laying on the uninjured skin, which is exactly what you want to do. Next thing you want to do is to take the gauze tape and you want to cut it in strips to where you can secure it on all four sides because you don't want your bandage to slip or move. I mean, if you have to wear long pants, that rubbing on your jeans would actually be very painful. So I'm gonna cut one piece, secure this side. Once you secure the bandage on there, you want to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose because if it's too tight, it can actually impair um, circulation and you actually want oxygen to get to the wound so it can uh, implement healing. And if it's, too, um, if it's too loose, you don't want it to move, like I said earlier, it could be very painful for the patient and you don't want the wound to be open to any open area. Um, and the last thing you want to do is to ask the patient or just make sure that the patient can move their limb, you know, with ease and that they can be comfortable with the bandage because you don't want that to restrict their range of motion or inhibit their everyday routine in any way. So now that we see that, you know, just let the patient know how to properly clean and that the most important thing is to change your bandage daily. So, in conclusion, um, that's how you clean a wound, and caring for the process can be very different from what you see the normal slapping your Band-Aid on there. It's actually a very, um, it's a, it's a very long process, and what you want to do is be educated and make sure your patient's educated on cleansing methods, because the most important thing to me is just to make sure that you protect yourself. Some people forget that they need to wear gloves. Because if you don't know your patient, you know, you don't want to risk spreading disease or infection to yourself. So always wear gloves and remember to follow the procedure. Thank you.